He had perfect pitch, perfect touch. Um, he had a, a, a musician's sense of a sentence. You don't think there's any chance of Gwendolyn becoming like her mother in about 150 years, do you, Algy? All women become like their mothers. That is their tragedy. No man does. That's his. There's always a lot of people who can do things very well, you know, to be witty in 1894. But there's a difference between the good and the very, very good, and the differences are in very small details. Pardon me, you are not engaged to anyone. When you do become engaged to someone, I or your father, should his health permit him, will inform you of the fact. For me, it's that should his health permit him, which just tweaks the whole thing up into wild. Is that clever? It is perfectly phrased and quite as true as any observation in civilised life should be. I'm sick to death of cleverness. Everybody is clever nowadays. There was um, an edge to that delight in paradox which made it more than humorous. It was, it was more than wit. He did make people, he forced people to consider the, the, the unconsiderable. To escape from the heat of the city, Wilde and Douglas retreated here to Goring-on-Thames. Surveying the properties for hire, Bosey typically declared that they must rent the biggest house there was. OK, I'll tell you a really amusing story about Oscar that I was told by one of the locals some time ago, a local who's lived here for many years. And he was explaining how one day, beautiful sunshine, suddenly the vicar, with whom he didn't get on at all, at all well, came bursting through the lich gate, which is way over in the corner of the garden over there next to the church, and found Oscar Wilde and Bosey completely naked, playing with garden hoses on the lawn here. And apparently the vicar said, what on earth do you think you're doing? And Oscar Wilde just stood back like this, threw out his hip and said, what you see is pure Greek. Oscar had come to write, Bosey to relax, but Bosey quickly became bored. They had one of the many blazing rows which followed the pattern of their addictive relationship. Oscar said, we are spoiling each other's lives. You are absolutely ruining mine, and evidently I am not making you really happy. An irrevocable parting, a complete separation, is the one wise philosophic thing to do. Three days later, Bosey was back, begging forgiveness, and Oscar took him in. I think that one of the things which make us feel for Wilde is what Richard Elman calls that berserk passion that uh, he met somebody and it was as though the rest had been written by Aeschylus. You know, he just went on and on until... Um, and it was self-aware. And he knew that it was tragic. For me, the most fascinating moment of Oscar Wilde's life is the afternoon when the libel trial has collapsed and a warrant is going to be issued for his arrest. And he decides to stay in the country. And it's a fact that at the time, the, the warrant for his arrest was delayed um, to give Oscar Wilde the chance to catch the, the boat, the last boat train. And he has lunch, and uh, famously at the Cadogan Hotel. And his mother sends him a message. She said, Oscar, she said, if you stay like an Irish gentleman and face the English, you will always be my son. But if you go away, I will never talk to you again. And I think it, it was, it, it's a sort of romantic way of putting it, but I think it actually went down to the marrow. I think he must have weighed up what was going to happen to him. He must have known that he was going to, um, that, he, that he would be found guilty, because of course he knew that he was guilty, and decided that it was going to give him a platform uh, which would, as I say, make him into a legend. Mm. It's outrageous. I mean, first of all, everybody forgets that what Wilde was charged with, which was gross indecency, it wasn't a crime two years before. It had just come in the statute books. Everybody's forgotten that. And as a result of that, 
it was, if I might put it so, wildly, wi widely practiced, not wildly practiced, among the upper classes. Uh, and uh, so nobody thought. So to pick on him for this was making him into a sort of a San Sebastian figure to be martyred by the mob. When Wilde was convicted and sent down to jail, um, London gay culture, I think, collapsed. I mean, you, you have Wilde's name being taken off the theatre marquees, his plays being taken out of the theatres. That whole sort of acceptance, social acceptance of the gay image was completely taken away. It was completely undermined. And obviously a lot of gays, those who could afford it, fled the country because they feared, you know, uh, more more retribution in, 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 uh, from, the, the, from the establishment. Um, those who, who couldn't afford to go just had to knuckle under, under the, the, the heavy manners of, 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 of the post-wild atmosphere in England, which really reigned for the next, what, 50, 60 years. I think that he was a, a notable victim of... Uh, that English genius for cutting down the people who are too smart for their own good. And I think there was quite a lot of pleasure, much of it expressed in quite malign terms when he fell. You know, I would quite like to read what the Daily Telegraph said in that moment, but there were worse things said. I mean, real glee. Oscar Wilde was sentenced to two years hard labor on the 25th of May, 1895. The great conversationalist was taken from the dock saying, and I, may I say nothing, my lord? Transferred to Reading jail by train, he was spat at in the face by an outraged commuter. For a year after that was done to me, he wrote, I wept every day at the same hour and for the same space of time. Oscar had once remarked that he wished his lengthy name, Oscar Fingolo Flaherty Wills Wild, could be shortened to The Wild, so that it would look better on advertisements for himself. Now it was reduced to the tragic abbreviation C33. 